Hey. Hello, everybody. Good morning. She said go. I guess that means we're on. Yeah. We start. We Hi. Just, we just earned a. <laughs> we just earned some production staff. Yeah, we did. Thanks for the cue. <laughs> she wants to pay for that. <laughs> yes. Hey, Jeremy Bryant's back with us. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, for a did you know webcast. I'm trying to get fired from this job, and I still have not gotten fired. They they won't make us quit for some reason. I, I yeah, we, it's, we, we keep trying to get them I to know, I mean, make us quit. Yeah. And that paycheck, I I guess, it keeps getting lost in the mail every well, week. Well, yeah, I haven't seen one of those <laughs> for it either. That's weird. I mean, I know something uh, going on here. Personally, how difficult it is to get fired from this webcast. <laughs> Because if I had a paycheck, I would give thirty dollars to Jennifer because she's walking around in this room begging people for thirty dollars. I know, oh, man. Yeah, you come in here and it's the first thing it she asks is, "Hey, of, uh, can I have thirty bucks?" It's like yeah. Jennifer. It reminds me of thirty bucks. What on was me. The, what's her name? The with the sad video and the dogs they show and the. But I will remember oh, Sarah McLaughlin. She's like <laughs> Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin yeah. of uh, the studio. Oh show. man, yeah, she's she's tugging at her heartstrings to I try know. and get thirty bucks. That's, yeah, <laughs> and she's doing it in like a a roundabout way. Like, do you know any small businesses who might give me thirty dollars? Yeah, if she like, carries, you're gonna go dogs? extort a small business for thirty yeah. bucks. Get a puppy. Exactly. This is saying get a sad puppy. You can get easily get thirty dollars. You can just show up with thirty bucks. Yeah. Does it have to be like a monthly thirty dollars? I don't know. Oh, well. Mysteries, oh, mysteries. No, we don't know. Because we're not going to ask Jennifer. Yeah. We're not going to ask her. Uh, hey, did y'all see what's going on with Facebook? No. No. Before we start anything else? Wow. Uh, yeah. You can take my screen here. Uh, $5 billion penalty over privacy breaches. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. So, so apparently, uh, Facebook mismanaged or lost some data. Customers... Basically a privacy breach. Yeah. yeah. I've heard about uh, this for a while. Yeah. And now FTC is saying uh, that's going to be a $5 billion settlement, buddies. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, you sort of have to you, – you start to expect stuff like that when you've got Facebook, Google, Twitter. <coughs> At Probably. this point, they're almost – yeah, monopolies. and I mean, that's that's kind of what this is saying. You know, deal comes amid growing calls in Washington for greater transparency and accountability for technology companies. Yeah. Uh, you know, with social media and everything out there and how powerful those companies can be on their own. Yeah. I think uh, they're finally cracking down and saying, no, we have got to get something in place or this is just a free-for-all mm -hmm. of information and data that's just and we're, going out. They... I I don't know which channel it was. I think it might have been HBO, but um, I overheard something playing on, on our TV about a documentary about Cambridge Analytica. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how they were so able to target people. Because apparently they had something like 5,000 data points on each user. Wow. That's it was either crazy. 5,000 or 500. I mean... Either way. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, though. And... Is, I think it's set it on there. It's got to be the largest fine I've ever heard of any yeah, business yeah. or organization. Uh, I yeah. think, uh, yeah, it's up here, something like that. Uh, and, you know, here, of course, is the other crazy part. It says, yet still only about a month's worth of revenue for Facebook. Yeah. Seriously? That's that's what do you CNN remember, Business says. Do you remember those weird days when it was when Facebook was first putting out their IPO? Mm -hmm. and it's like Facebook's like, finally nobody, going public. Nobody knows how they're going to make money. Right. And it's like, well. and now look, they're making five billion dollars a month. And that was what when did they start? Oh five, oh four, oh five. Yeah, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, right. Something like that. Yeah, and it just started out as a what it's college. Crazy. You had to be in. You had to be registered at. You used to have to have a, a college email address. Yeah, mm -hmm. to uh -huh. get it. Yeah, and then they were like, no, let's become billionaires. <laughs> let's open this up to everybody. Yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down for the movie Social Network about Facebook? The movie? Thumbs up, for sure. Never seen it. Whoa, really? I'm I'm surprised you've never seen almost it. Almost zero interest. Uh, <laughs> wow. I was basically just like, I'm not really all that interested in this guy. Really good movie, oh, no. in my opinion, seeing you know how it all came to fruition and mm -hmm. yeah. what it actually started as. I mean, it, and of course, again, if everything in there is true in the way they depicted it, right. it was created as a, a rate these girls app yeah you know? like, a, like a tinder before it's time right yeah exactly it's kind of like i'll give her a seven or she's a 10 or whatever 40. yeah and uh 
morphed and morphed and yep. maybe borrowed an idea from somebody else and yeah. turned I mean, it into Facebook. I know when Facebook first came out, um, I didn't. I was just like, why? That's already been done two times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Um, yep. That's why it's so surprising that Facebook ended up just sort of embedding itself. Yeah. When it was, it's almost exactly the same idea as Friendster and MySpace. Yep. And look, MySpace is no longer with us. Yep. Neither of those. Or yeah. 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 Napster. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Man, remember Napster? Uh, yeah. So cool. Not anymore. No. Yo, I'm going to hit up that lime wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but there you go. $5 billion. Man. Um, crazy to think, but then when you think about the money they make, it's a uh, slap yeah. on the wrist. That's about what I make a month. Yeah. It's not like... That's close, right? Yeah. yeah. It's close. It's not like Zuckerberg's going to have to put off, like, getting that catalytic converter fixed on his car. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yeah. He's going to be yeah, okay. Yeah, he's probably not too worried about it. Yeah, I think Jennifer should ask Facebook for $30. Ooh, there's a small business yeah. she could hit yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they might throw out 30 bucks a month. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, Facebook, pretty crazy. Let's look at our national days. Let's see All what right. we got today. Oh, hey. Oh, 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 oh God, made go. the catch. See, man. you start making fun of salespeople and like, throw stuff at throws you. Like, throws like Dak. <laughs> Bad throw. <laughs> throws like Oh, Dak. man. All right. National Cousins Day. Ah, hey, nice. You like your cousins? Have any cousins? I do, yeah. Very I think difficult. we all have cousins. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> some people don't. My, whole, <laughs> some my people family might just have... sprung forth from the earth. <laughs> my, be, <laughs> my people might not just have cousins. You never know. Immediate family, and that's it. <laughs> that's all you get. I Nothing. mean, my my uh, my family, like my immediate family, we were sort of um, separated from a lot of our extended family. Mm-hmm. My dad didn't uh, like keep up with his parents. Mm-hmm. And my mom's family was in Spain. Mm. So, like, being in Texas, it's not like I hung around with cousins much. Right. You know? Um, it wasn't until, really, I, I barely got to meet my cousins in Spain until I was, like, 17. Yeah. So I almost didn't have cousins. There you go. Gives you a reason to go to Spain, though. It does. Yeah, to go visit family. It's still just as expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. What else do we have? National Tequila Day. Oh! Now, where Ryan's is favorite. our sample of that? Now, that is one tequila, I believe, is actually from the devil. Oh, yeah. you're not a, <laughs> not a tequila guy. Yes. Listen, I, I know that there was a website that I used to read. They called tequila felony juice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because man. somehow you get, like, superpowers when you drink tequila. Yep. I like tequila. Me too. It's very tasty. It's good. Um... There's certain types that are better than others, but yeah. yeah. I just don't like the way it makes that, me feel like Exactly. It. Have you ever don't, eaten don't a worm? Even... No. No. Ew. No? Yeah. Nope. That's not even a challenge I'll ever put myself up for. Oh, I've eaten it so, a couple times. The other thing about tequila is, uh, I mean, in, in the U.S., Cinco de Mayo is a gigantic. Mm. Um, I mean, basically people think of it as uh, Mexican St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I can see that. Like, people in Mexico don't really celebrate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's an yeah. American holiday. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's my birthday. Ooh. So, uh, double party. I don't. I, I definitely don't go out anymore on my birthday. <laughs> not at least not to drinking establishments mm-hmm. and where anybody will overhear that it's my birthday. Yeah. That because would be no fun. tequila shots all around. Mm-hmm. And it's just like no, drink it, mm-hmm. Jeff. Jeff, yes, we got yeah, you this. Drink yeah. it. Yeah. No, Jeff, you're, you're like, gonna drink it. Like, I said, drink, drink it, one. Jeff. Yeah. But it's my birthday. <laughs> That's an expensive shot to buy, too, most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the last time yeah. I drank a lot of tequila, I woke up driving a porcelain bus about 4 a.m. <laughs> I thought for a second that you were going to say, I woke up driving a Porsche. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Like, now that is a night. <laughs> I want some it's, of that tequila. It's like, it's like you drink tequila and suddenly your life is Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> like, I actually had a, a buddy. I don't know if it was tequila related in college. He had so much to drink. This is a true story. He had like this nice Ford Mustang. He was by himself, so he's on his way home. He's only like 100. He was right by his dorm. Mm -hmm. 
he wasn't going fast, I mean, 10, 15 miles an hour, but he fell out of his car while he was driving. <laughs> so it just coasted to a stop, but he fell out of his car while he was driving. Uh, what a lucky wow. person. Wow. <laughs> yeah, how lucky can you get? <laughs> oh, my God. That's good. All right. What else do we have? Okay. National Amelia Earhart Day. Hey, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. And we'll talk about that more in a minute, but... Uh, that goes into our other stuff we're going to talk about. What else do we have? Uh, National Thermal Engineer Day. Oh, cool, cool, guys. <laughs> That's – hey, doesn't that tie in with um, with the story Amanda's doing about air conditioning? I'll bet it does. It may. <laughs> so we were talking about earlier that um, Freon, right, mm-hmm. in AC units is being phased out. Yeah, it's going to be gone. Yeah. I thought so. they already had. Uh, they phased it out in cars. In cars, yes, not in we'll AC use some units, kind though. Of, okay. Yeah. According to ZipRecruiter, the average thermal engineer makes between fifty to one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars a year. It's kind of a wide range. Yeah, it's a wide range there. Yeah. Huh. Starting salary fifty thousand. Looks like it's gonna be yeah. higher, closer to one hundred here, according to. Uh, so. A thermal engineer. I'll go do so that. It sounds like an important job. Yeah. Yep. Probably just learn those trade skills on the job. <laughs> you just pick it up. Who needs to go to school for that? Just mediocre at math. Yeah. Honestly. Fine. Don't even need it. Really don't need critical thinking or anything like that. Mm-mm. <laughs> National drive through day. Oh. It's a pretty vague day. Yeah. I mean, everything's got drive throughs now. Everything. Yeah. You can go to a drive through beer place. The party barn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or any fast food, of course. I mean, yeah. it was bad enough. We, everything's got drive through now. Everything's being delivered to you. Right. And it's going to be to the what? point someday that they're actually going to take the food directly. You only get off the bed or the couch. They'll just <laughs> feed be able me. to. Yeah, Consider feed me. me. <laughs> <laughs> They'll deliver the food to your mouth. Uh, man, yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. So, honestly, we're. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that's something that really grinds my gears. Yeah, it grinds. <laughs> so, my wife loves it. Absolutely loves it. She can delivery. Not not necessarily the delivery, but the um, grocery pickup. Oh. Uh-huh. She'll sit there on the couch, go through the app, put in everything she wants from the grocery store, submit, pays for it, and then says it'll be ready in an hour, whatever. And then you go and pick it up. I enjoy going to the grocery store. Might sound weird, but I enjoy it walking down the aisles, picking my own stuff out. Yeah. It's kind of like you're a man. Me. <laughs> it's, to me, it's the whole thing of Hastings. We were talking about Hastings. Uh, yeah. I got just as much enjoyment out of going to Hastings and looking for the movie that I wanted yeah. as I did from watching the movie. It was an experience in itself. So while while it might not be exciting to go to the grocery store, but it's kind of like that mentality. It's like, wh- where do we draw the line? Where does this stop? At some point, I'm just going to sit in my chair Someone's going to come by and feed me. Uh Someone's going to do all my shopping. The drones are going to deliver my packages. What I think is more likely is that you're going to be the one doing the feeding. Unless you're rich. I'll be feeding somebody else. (laughs) That's probably true. (laughs) I think that's more likely. But yeah, I just So you'll still get the experience of like heading out and doing stuff. It's just that you're going to be. I like getting out of the house. Yeah. I don't want to sit in the house all day every day. Yeah. That's not going to stop for most people. I'll tell you what drive through I miss is drive through movies. Or drive in. Drive, drive in movies. through <laughs> movies. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just inject it in you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, good movie. Oh, wow, that was awesome. Did you see that? <laughs> that would be cool, too, actually. That you're getting like cool. a Sonic Sunday while you're watching a movie. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting closer to the Matrix is essentially what this entire conversation is. <laughs> yeah, hey, go ahead and upload that for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm That's drive a in movies. That's model right there we thought of. <laughs> <laughs> but the oh, drive in movies... Uh, how much of our audience actually has ever been? You and you all ever been to a drive-in movie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there used to be one close, very close to town. If I did, it was so long ago I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. I there remember used to be one in Lubbock, and there was one, of course, one in La Mesa. Mm-hmm. It's closed. Yeah, one here long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah, I went yeah. when when uh, I lived here as a kid. Is the one in La Mesa dad. closed? Oh, it's been closed for a while. Has yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the last one. One opened up close though. Somewhere. Where was yeah, that? It was in Lubbock. There was one in Lubbock not that long ago. Yeah, but I was thinking another little small town closer just opened mm, one up. Did they know. not? I don't know. I'll have to look that up. I thought yeah, we were talking that's about that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but that reminds me of a science fiction that I read years back that uh, they could they could spray you with something 
and it would put these nanoparticles into your bloodstream. And you would dream advertisements. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Isn't that evil? That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... What do we got today in history? Today in history? Uh, I'm sure we got some good stuff. So, we were talking about it's National Amelia Earhart Day. Yeah. Probably because she was born on this day. That's pretty cool. In 1897, one of the world's most celebrated aviators, and the first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. She was born in Atchison, Atchison Kansas. Atchison, really? In Kansas. Kansas? Huh. Yeah. Yep. Born in the old plains of Kansas. That's pretty cool. That's pretty oh, great. Um, 1897. 1897. She died in the 20s, right? It was the 20s when she was doing the, uh, or 30s. Oh gosh, I don't know. It must have been the 30s, because you're not you're not flying around the world in a or across the Atlantic Ocean in a biplane. Probably not. <laughs> you're not even <laughs> attempting that. Really. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Don't know when she died. We'd have to look that up. Neat. Jeremy probably his nose off the top. Of his uh, head. I'll look right now. Oh, okay. Uh, what else do we have? You know, we had a, stuff that happened this day, but nothing that was too crazy interesting for me. Supreme 1937. 37. 37. 30 years old. <coughs> so this one was kind of 40. Yeah, 40. interesting if you're into the whole Watergate stuff. 74, U.S. Supreme Court ruled that President Richard Nixon had to provide transcripts of Watergate tapes to special prosecutors. You know what's wild? Is the fact that at some point somebody in Nixon's administration or Nixon himself decided that it was okay to reveal the existence of his <laughs> taping system? They were like, "Yeah, that's not a big deal. They won't look like, at Nah, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good. Don't worry about it." <laughs> He's been taking all of his own like nefarious notes on the <laughs> taping system and just saying whatever in the, in the Oval Office. And uh, yeah, and then it matter. was like, "Yeah, go ahead and just tell." Um, the special prosecutor that we have that. Yeah, let them know. <laughs> I'd no rather get into, a, into a, an executive privilege argument over this than just keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? 2005, Lance Armstrong became hey, the first wow. rider to win the Tour de France seven times. Sort of. However, yeah. <laughs> he was later stripped of all his titles. After an investigation yeah. revealed that he was the key figure in a wide-ranging doping conspiracy, mm -hmm. while he compiled his tour victories, so yeah, blood he wasn't doping. quite equipped like the rest of us guys are. So he was just trying to well get the extra. I'd like to get your opinion on this, <laughs> there, Jeremy. Blood doping, is it cheating? Blood doping? Yeah. Or just doping? In period. So basically, it's what they do is what, like a, a blood transfusion, right? Yeah, essentially. From what I understand about it, it would be the same thing as training at a higher altitude mm -hmm. for a long time to right. get your blood used to the oxygen levels oh, okay. and then going to a lower altitude and you just crush the race, Yeah. right? Again, we kind of go back to the idea of, well, I lift heavier weights to get stronger to hit the ball further. It's I, not steroids. It's not a drug. Here's where I would, um, like, training requires discipline and skill. Mm -hmm. Blood doping requires a needle. But, so, yeah, if they're doing it transfusion-wise, but if they're just training at different elevations. Is that blood doping? I thought it was. I didn't know. I, I'll have to look it up to clarify. I thought that that was a form of blood doping was basically enriching your blood with oxygen because when you're you training at a higher level. Yeah, go train in the Rockies riding a bike yeah, and then go ride a be, bike in Louisiana. You're going to be a big difference. It. That'd be a, I don't think that's blood doping, in my opinion. Right. But yeah. obviously transfusion with a needle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why, uh, speaking of higher altitude, the national champion always in cross country or long distance usually comes from Colorado or a higher elevation. Right. Because when they're at a normal elevation, they just have a huge advantage over the competition. Right. 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 Um, Which is why other people want to train in those places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... Yeah. And it's still training. Know, it's interesting. And probably if you're from Louisiana... And you go to Colorado to train, that training is probably pretty brutal. Yeah. Right. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. So I train in the Alps. <laughs> Seriously. That's why I train on Everest. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we looked through. We didn't have a lot of super interesting stuff much. today. 
But I have something that I wanted to talk about. Oh, boy. Yeah, get ready. What do you got? Surprise, surprise, it's about aliens again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're excited. But I watched a documentary on Netflix the other day, mm. and it was super intriguing. So it was about the guy Bob Lazar, which okay. you're, if you're a conspiracy theorist like myself or you're into aliens at all, you've probably heard his name. So Bob Lazar, if you don't know, uh, was a guy back in the 80s, according to him, worked at a place called S4, mm -hmm. which was uh, an establishment, I guess, about 30 miles south of Area 51. Okay. And he says that he worked on alien spacecraft. Neat. Uh Yeah, that they had a craft. And it was his job, among others, to kind of break apart the technology and figure out how it worked, what it was, blah, 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 and go through the whole things. Now, uh, for face value, you either can believe in it or not believe in it. It doesn't really matter. But for me, there were a couple very intriguing things. One was that when he was drawing a sketch of the technology that he worked on and how UFOs actually flew. Yeah. There were three, um, whatever you call them, particle somethings. Don't remember. But right. anyways, there were three of them, three circles. And the way he described it, the way it works is if you have, say, a bowling ball on a bed and you push the side of the bed down by the bowling ball, the bowling ball will fall into that space. So that is how... It's gravity. Yes, it, it bends gravity. Got it. Is the way that uh, the objects actually flew. So... There was no propulsion. They weren't being pushed anywhere. They they're, were falling. They're bending gravity out of its way and okay. falling into that space. That's neat. So it's, it was pretty cool, just that whole concept. That's but a, then, that's a fun, yeah. then he said something that was really intriguing to me. What did he say? He said that the saucers do not fly like they've always been depicted to fly, like right. this. Mm. They actually fly on their side because those three things are at the bottom of the craft. They fly on their side because they turn and they bend matter or bend gravity out of the way. Uh. Then they fly that way. What was intriguing to me about that is the video that was just released from the pilots that had seen whatever they saw. So, and I, we can I'm probably gonna, I'm going to search for that. What, yeah, we can probably pull it pilots? up and look at it. They actually, the pilots you actually know. talk about that and they go, "Oh man, look at it turn," and you can see it in the video. You watch the thing turn on its side and keep moving so it was really kind of interesting hmm. to me that the newest piece of video that has been released wow, to the public May 26th huh right Crazy. And, and that the people have seen bob lazar had been describing how these things moved like that for over 20 years um okay i'm just gonna pull this up cnn has a video of this don't get us for copyrights, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's really interesting when you hear the... So these pilots had seen something, and they finally reported it um, because they assumed it was some sort of a drone or something that the government was testing and flying. They were worried there was going to be an accident. and they were, So they didn't put it out there as, hey, we saw a UFO. They just put it out there as, hey, somebody's flying something, and it's going to cause an accident because at one point there were two planes flying side by side, and this thing flew right in between them. Okay. And they were like, hey, no, we're not about this anymore. Did you find the video, Joe? I'm waiting for this uh, advertisement to get out of the oh, okay. recording. It's probably, <laughs> you know, Stephenville apparently has lots of aliens. Really? Well, that's where they have a lot of reports. Huh. In Stephenville. There you go. Oh. Look at these. They, they start out their package with some um, Independence Day footage. Oh, hey, there you go. That means it's got to be real. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's what we were expecting. Will Smith punching an alien. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're looking for. I think he'd be the one that I would want to fight the aliens first. Yeah. That'd be a good question. <laughs> Who would you choose to fight the aliens? I would, choose anybody. I would probably. I mean, Will Smith rock, is a good actually. one. I'm, ooh. I, the Rock would, the rock yeah, would be kick their butt. Pretty Somebody, good. I had a friend who, who said The Rock is basically our generation's Jimmy Stewart. What an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he's in, he's in movies. It doesn't matter if they're good or not. You yeah. want to watch them. You're just like, That's true. I like The Rock. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's good. He would be good to fight the aliens. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. surprised that hasn't happened yet. They would. should come up with a movie for that. And so this is uh, the video that was on here. It's it's pretty far away, this 
whatever yeah, this are they gonna, looks like. Are they going to show the video they did. or what? what they is, did for a second. So, What is happening here? Uh, after all this. There it is. Yeah, here you go. So they actually talk about this thing moving and see it's kind of tilted on its side. It is, yeah. And so this was just released not too long ago, I believe. It hit the news. <clears throat> yeah, this was May time. 26th is when is when this story was published. Yeah, and you go on you if you listen to the way that these pilots talk about what they saw, um, the one basically says it had no propulsion. Yeah. It had no plume around mm -hmm. it, and it outran my F-16. Yeah, no, I think well, I and mean, then he went on to say, I just want to fly one, whatever it is. If <laughs> we could... <yeah. laughs> that's that's a totally expected response. The pilot being like, man, that thing looks fun. Right. Um, um, so, I, and actually, you can take my screen. I've got a screenshot here of it. All right. So, again, the interesting thing to me, it's not because somebody was saying, oh, there's UFOs, oh, there's proof. It's because a guy that 20 years ago yeah. went on the news saying, hey, man, I worked on this. It's out there. This is what we've done. And then he describes how these things fly at a tilted angle Neat. on a different axis. Yeah. It's just kind of an obscure point that you might not think somebody would bring about that would be coincidental. Right. Right? True. So I, I mean, you can see how slanted it is there. It's kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. Um, and the idea that... that uh, people can get around just by manipulating gravity that's great i like right. that yeah um although the, one of the things i thought of luckily it doesn't fly straight up and down because i was just thinking about how many people are you like crushing <laughs> right. with, with that changed gravity <laughs> right so yeah you know it was uh it was pretty good if, like i said if you're into it the documentary is worth watching but the other thing that was interesting is there's another piece of technology he basically describes it when he went into work every day there was like a hand scanner mm -hmm. and he and it shows all the original interviews from the 80s of when the news teams interviewed him and he describes this basically a hand scanner as it would read the density in your bones he thought and he didn't really know how it worked but he knew that that's how they had to get in every day mm -hmm. and again in 89 he describes this thing yeah this scanner and describes the light above it and how it looked and everything and the filmmaker says well I actually found a picture of one of the scanners that was used in one of the military bases, blah, blah, that you described. And he hands him this picture and he just kind of chuckles and he thought, man, I never thought I would see one of these again. You found it. That's it. And okay. that hand scanner is literally exactly how he described it. Wow. 20 years ago. So that's, it's like, that's crazy. Again, in 1989, you're talking about a hand scanner that's measuring bone density to get in somewhere. So it just, there's a lot of things that are weird that, yeah could lend credence to other things and it makes Bone you wonder density is a wild thing to scan right but mm. yeah it's does it change odd. don't know but probably not rapidly enough for your security clearance <laughs> yeah. to get revoked but. oh man my osteoporosis <laughs> kept me from getting in, <laughs> getting into s4 but that's also where this is all sparked as we had talked about uh, the whole storm area 51 yeah deal and he had commented on there and said that's not a good idea right and it's a very misinformed idea so, anyways because there's no aliens at area 51 they're at s4 s4 where is, I worked. okay so that i think about um my dad was stationed in uh holloman air force base for a little while which is right outside of alamogordo it's where they worked on the um stuff program in the 90s mm -hmm. uh that was the sort of air force base where it, Maybe in like in the housing area, you could take pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else on the base, no. They're like absolutely not. Do not let anybody see you with a camera. Right. Um, but right next to Holloman Air Force Base is White Sands National Monument, which mm. is really pretty, nice, mm -hmm. but also White Sands Military Installation. Right. Mm. Which is like I don't know how many square miles of desert between. El Paso and Alamogordo. A lot of testing done out there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So every once in a while, if you were on the highway between Alamogordo and Las Cruces, uh, military trucks would just stop traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could see that there was no He's traffic like, allowed for like 10 miles. And it would just be like, I guess they're shooting missiles or something. I don't know what's going on over here. <laughs> don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I can believe it. I've it's seen something. It. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I don't know. Pretty crazy. I will say this. Speaking of other forms of life, I'm now on season three of Stranger Things. Are you? Fun. 
a couple episodes in. In fact, I got to get out of here at noon and go watch another episode. <laughs> so this is this is <laughs> yesterday. Um, Danielle said that she's she's been watching Stranger Things also. Yeah, yeah. you've got two converts. There you go. Are you liking it? it? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's. it's uh, is it, have, so have you just binged season one, season two to get to season three, or had you seen them before? No, I've never watched them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah we we, we would through. watch them. You know, by the time it kind of slow down, it's like nine o'clock at night. So I'll just watch one episode because I go to work <laughs> at like five in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, keep it going. <laughs> yeah. And then the next yeah. day, I'm just you know drinking coffee like ten <laughs> cups a day. I'm Stranger <laughs> Things responsible for keeping Americans <laughs> at tired at work. <laughs> looking at how you can get out of work early so you can. Yeah. Like, I gotta catch up on that 1983 yeah. business. Like, oh, yeah. my stomach's not feeling I've too good. I've got a meeting today. to go to, boss. I gotta go home. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, it does. It feels exactly like a Stephen King novel from the 1980s, right? Yeah. And a Steven Spielberg movie. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Yeah. It's been really good. 80s. Love it. Oh. 80s. Oh. Is that what we're doing well, today? I watched this morning. I was because I heard some people talk about it. I didn't know it was out. The new. You can probably pull this up. The oh. new Top Gun Maverick trailer is out. Yeah. Oh, that is right. So talk about things same, flying the through the air. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, not the soundtrack. The same. Music bed that you yeah they do very familiar yeah, which um, would be uh, Harold Faltermeyer yep and Hans Zimmer wow isn't it right yep making making music again of course we all know Kenny Loggins was the one that really capitalized really, on really, Top Gun really kicked that off <laughs> all right oh, I'm gonna, man I'm gonna pull this up uh, yeah so I, I think underneath. I think we can just enjoy the trailer. Can we? I think we're going to, right? No. Well, I don't work here, so I'm not get sued. I don't care. <laughs> I don't really. I don't really know at this point. <laughs> uh, it depends, Jeff. Do you have audio on the trailer? I'm not sure. Well, we can talk over it. That's okay. Fine. Yeah, that's all right. It's people fine. can see what's happening. Sure. Um, Away we go. The danger zone. Oh, oh man. I don't think they can see the trailer. See this really. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Oh, oops, I thought and I was off camera there. Yeah, so there we I. go. There we go. <laughs> now we're in we're the trailer. We're just going to start that over. Yeah, just go ahead and start it over for them. All right. Um, so uh, here's, a, here's a thing that has been um, happening over and over is the is the is some kind of aircraft, spacecraft or whatever, flying mm-hmm. real close to the sand. Yeah. They love it. Because it shows how good you are as a pilot. Well, I can tell you what's going on right now. I could try to imitate Ed Harris, who's talking saying, you know, you should be a two-star admiral by now. Why is that? <laughs> why why, why are good. you still a, what is it, yeah. captain? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Why are you yeah, still yeah. a captain? And yeah. Tom Cruise is like, well, good question. And like, of course, he puts I'm on the Maverick. 1980 sunglasses. Because like, I'm Maverick. <laughs> yes. That's why. So there you this go. Is, what's really cool, what was really cool Man, to me. Man, I can't wait for Westworld. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really cool to me when I watched this trailer for the first time is you can see in the trailer how many of the same things, just like that shot right yep. there, yeah. that they've kept from the original movie that they're kind of rebooting and bringing back. Uh, that's awesome because you know Tom Cruise was actually in that plane and that shot was mm-hmm. legit because most of the time... That's the way I he think, does things. If not all of the time, he will make himself an executive producer or a producer on movies so he will allow himself to do his own stunts. Because yep. when you're not a producer... You don't get to make that call. Right. They basically say no. Yeah, same um, helmet, right? right. The same design because they, helmet they, there. They basically yeah. say, like, you are too expensive to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, like when he's jumping out of airplanes for Mission Miss, Impossible. I still that, can't believe that. Right. Yeah, we that talked about crazy. that stuff t- yesterday, too. Did you? Yeah. There you Just go. Just the fact that he was 50 years old running on out, around on the outside of Burj Dubai. Yeah. Well, he's older. And, uh, so this, is, this part's cool, too, right here. This movie came out, the first one, 34 years ago. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, 33 years ago, because this movie's coming out in 2020. But 1986. So, the only thing that um, I wish would have happened, which obviously couldn't, is that Tony Scott would have directed it. Tony Scott can't, because he's dead. Hey. Yeah. But, since he did the first one, I think it would have been really cool if he'd done the yeah. sequel. But, it looks, uh, it looks like they're going to do justice to it, and... I tell you what, the thing, the only thing I'm kind of concerned about, and I hate to say it, is that Val Kilmer's back as Iceman. Mm. Now, I love Val Kilmer. Yeah. <clears throat> Even though I was kind of creeped out, creeped out when I met Val Kilmer, because it was a little odd. Um, but I, he had he went through throat cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back from that, um, it just in the most recent pictures, just 
doesn't look his best, obviously. No. Um, well, but, you know, he's coming back as Iceman, and I hope that yeah. he kills it and it works. And I think, um, I mean, he disappeared for a long time, mm -hmm. and then it looked like he, he put on weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, for the most <coughs> part, it sh people should l ease off of actors as far as, like, putting on weight and stuff like that, actors and right. actresses. But the other thing um, that happened, like, he disappeared and – Everything and then he did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. and it was just like holy <laughs> crap they are funny, yes. just hilarious together. Yeah. Um, Is he so I mean he's he's always had like acting chops. He's always been really good at it. Oh yeah, for sure. And for me it was just um, uh, you know obviously when you when you meet actors that you've idolized your whole life. Yeah. Um, it's easy <clears> to <throat> be thrown because. There's many people that I met that I was like, wow, they're exactly how I pictured yeah. them to be. And then there's <laughs> other people who was like, wow, you were not at all the person I thought you would. But then I thought to myself, how, why do I even get to assume what kind of person you are? Because I watched you play <laughs> right. a character. I'm like, yeah, you know? I was acting. Yeah, it's like that's my job. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. We were down uh, in Austin <coughs> shooting the premiere for MacGruber. Oh, okay. The SNL movie, yeah. McGruber, based on MacGyver. Anyways, uh, Val Kilmer is the villain in that movie. And we were shooting the interview with uh, the director and the other actors and talent. <coughs> and I action actually was uh, booming. So I was holding okay. a, yeah. a boom mic up and just standing there and booming the audio. And I felt this just kind of presence, like, right by me. So yeah. I just kind of gave this, like, glance back. And, and literally, it's going to be a little awkward. This is how it was. I mean... This is Val Kilmer. <laughs> as, I, as I'm just standing there booming this interview. And so, first off, I'm caught off guard because there's somebody, like, breathing on my neck. And then secondly, I'm like, it's Val Kilmer. <laughs> yep, that is Iceman <laughs> standing right next to me. He's like, that's the story of how I got fired for whacking a famous person in the face with a microphone. Right, yeah, so I'm doing the interview and you're like, boom! <laughs> It was just a little off from there, you know? Yeah. And you could tell he just he hadn't slept in a few days and, oh. you know, just kind of been out on the town <laughs> and, you know. You could smell the alcohol on his yeah, breath. Yeah, a little well, you bit. Could eat right you, by his breath. Yeah, yeah, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, even the, the talent and the cast and crew of the film were kind of commenting on it. You oh. know, being like, oh, he, he made it. He showed up. Like, that's cool. We didn't know if he was going to be here because that's kind of the way it was, so. So well, you're good. definitely going to get sued by his publicist now. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. But, I mean, e after all that, I can still say that I still love Val Kilmer. <laughs> I met Val Kilmer. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of a good segue because we were talking earlier about 80s actors, well, actors, that are still relevant today. Right. You, you get, I mean, so Tom Cruise has a movie coming out this year, or mm -hmm. actually next year. Right. You got uh, Sylvester Stallone in the new Rambo movie. Yeah. Uh, Schwarzenegger's when making an appearance in the new Terminator movie this yep. year. Mm -hmm. So I was yep. like, I was looking at this list here. And you guys, I'll just kind of, I'll read them real quick. Or you got them right there. So Tom Cruise, I mean, Tom Cruise is still very relevant 37 mm -hmm. years later. Sure. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Talk about how the mighty have fallen. I know. And he's looking at making, He's he is, every once in a while, <coughs> just tries to make another comeback. I can't remember the last good movie that Eddie Murphy was in. Nighty Professor? <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> in 89. <laughs> I don't think he's anything good since the 80s. You're probably right, actually. Yeah, uh, I mean. There's a good one. Corey Feldman. Oh, man, yeah, I tell you what. There's so. a dream team of Corey Feldman and Corey Aim, right? Yeah. Uh, um, who had some phenomenal movies together. Obviously, nothing recent. Well, you know the good thing about Corey Feldman? Because he had a really tough time. Mm -hmm. Right, he yeah. uh, he came out and said that he had been sexually assaulted oh, as yeah. a kid, right. like repeatedly. Right, and so that sort of explains this whole '90s and early 2000s, uh, everything that was going on with him. Right, but um, he was a he was sort of like a huge precursor to the whole Me Too mm -hmm. movement. All of that, he right. just like. I was like, hey, did you know what was going on in Hollywood? Yeah. And, I, yeah, and you people know, were just kinda... like, that's just Corey acting crazy. <laughs> He's like, no, like... it was really <laughs> happening. Yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. Um, Anthony yeah, Michael and... Hall. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. I had, look, I had to remember that one. That's, that's Breakfast yeah. Club, Breakfast Club and, and National Pacific he... Vacation. <laughs> yeah, right. Rusty. I forgot that he was. <laughs> rusty. 
Uh, so he had uh, what was that series that he did? Oh, Don't remember. Man, it was also Weird Science. Corey Feldman. No, Anthony Michael Hall. Oh, he was in Weird Science. Yeah, he with Kelly LeBrock, who was probably one of the hottest actresses it's in my true. opinion of the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, he says they he remember. guest starred in Community. He was yeah, in uh, yeah. uh, where, uh, I... Warehouse Thirteen. He, he produced the TV also... series Dead Zone. Dead That's Zone. what I was going to say. Dead, Dead Zone. Zone was the That's thing, it. Yeah, the yeah, Stephen yeah. King thing that he was in. Dead Zone. Okay. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. He's still very relevant. He is. Uh, he is. Yes. How old is this dude so, now? And Sylvester um, Stallone was like dropping off the map for a while, but mm-hmm. yeah. Did a good oh, job and I guess if they if he, they haven't guessed it, we're just going to top ten. Yeah, we're just got. I mean, best hold on. actors, actresses. Oh, we're doing. <laughs> Got to okay, roll the slate. Sorry. sorry. Got to roll the slate. Here we yeah. go. Now it's official. Ta-da. My bad. Top ten. Yeah. Of, let's say the, best actors, actresses from the eighties. That are still relevant. Yeah. Or, sure. That are cool. still yeah. That are still right. doing yeah, do that. something. So yeah, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, I don't even know I if mean, I need to pull pictures up of people like Sylvester Stallone. Probably not. You guys know who Sylvester Stallone is? Two of the biggest movies. We could do. We could do a then history. and now. I wonder if there's a then and now. Yeah, and then and now would be good. Yeah. That yeah. would be kind of That's cool. good. Yeah. How about? Um, <laughs> yeah. So Rocky, obviously, one, two, three, four, five. Rocky Balboa, then Creed, Creed two. I mean, to the never-ending franchise of great movies. Yeah. Minus five. Expendables. Expendables. Yeah. Expendables. One, two, and three, which has an amazing cast. So what was the – I think part of the big thing behind the Expendables was that uh, they wanted to make an action movie that was using um, practical effects. Okay. Yeah. Without so, so much CGI and stuff like and that, they wanted to do it the old way. Again, um, it's Sylvester Sloan's really cool. He's one of those guys that um, does – all of his own stunts and stuff on set. Um, wow. When you hear the guys talk about his work ethic, um, it's really cool. He, uh, it, They describe him as um, the first one in the gym, the last one to leave, and even on uh, filming days, you know, when they have to be on set. Uh, that's just him. He's up. I mean, this is, this is back in done. 2017. I guess. I mean, damn. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. knowing how to work out, I guess. Yeah, crazy stuff. Uh, and, yeah, there's even one uh, younger, if you take my screen, there's even a younger one with the same pick that you had uh, on the right. So definitely been doing it a long time. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say, okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought he started out doing, like, adult films. I believe so. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, so the Italian Stallion yeah. Yeah. Was, was the first one, that's right? That's how he was, he was paying the bills mm-hmm. while he was writing Rocky. Yeah. And sleeping in bus stations and stuff like that. Which, yeah. Rocky, <coughs> if I'm not mistaken, won Best Picture. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, there you go. <coughs> yeah, that's a crazy... I mean, he deserves any success that he gets. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go see the new Rambo movie. But yeah, it's... It, no. Man, yeah. you know, for me, it's just... I love the John Rambo character, uh-huh. but I just don't know. I mean, I'll watch it. For sure, mm-hmm. I'll watch it, but right. I don't know if I can get behind the new one. I'll have to see the way that it's done, and <laughs> yeah, and the, you know, kind of the road that he takes with it. But I mean, I think the best thing about Creed, which is another, you know, he's bringing back these. He tried again with Balboa, right, mm-hmm. to bring it back, and that didn't work out so well. I don't think. No, um, I liked it. I mean, yeah, I but it was I, kind I of would, a good. Uh, I would doubt if it had much as far as like box office returns or anything like that. Yeah. You know? Um, but the thing that makes Creed really great is that it's like a passing of, of the storyline. Right. Right. Yeah. Kind of passing the torch on to somebody else. Right. Um, Rambo's not going to have that unless he meets some militia member. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's no one to really pass that torch on. Yeah. But maybe. Hey. Um, I don't know why I can't think of the name of it right now, but do you remember the boxing movie that Stallone did with... Um, Robert De Niro, when they were yeah, it was like <laughs> the, the old, old timers, yeah. yeah, and they were kind I don't of that one at all. making fun that he was in Raging Bull and he was Rocky. <laughs> <That's> fun, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a fun idea. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. I man, I don't remember the name. I have to look it up. Uh, but yeah, Stallone definitely major actor. Um, he's now. Oh, you uh, just pull out people. Just wherever. How? 
I was looking at. I found a really good one. I totally forgot about. I mean, I did just see one, and I'm going to go with it. Uh, <laughs> maybe no, that's yours. Okay. Um, let's see, actors from the '80s. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Bobby D, Robert De Niro. Robert mm. De Niro. He does yeah, a really I mean, good job of just sort of sticking around, staying relevant. Yeah. Even if uh, the movies he does aren't always that great. Um. Yeah, I was trying sometimes, to think of the most. Sometimes it's like, what are you doing in that? I don't know. There was a movie that he was in where it was like almost a rom com, but it was more like some kind of. It was supposed to be a comedy. With him as like an old man who was supposed to have retired, but then works with. Uh, yes, I, um, I saw that too. That's with uh, Golly. I forgot her name. He's an intern. It's yeah. called the intern. The intern. That's what it is. Yes, I watched that and I was like, I don't really understand what the point of this movie was. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was good. Yeah. Meet the Fockers and and uh, Meet the Parents and all mm-hmm. those movies. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to see him in. Uh, you know some kind of a hard-hitting drama again. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Are you on my screen? Whoops. You're on my screen. I'm giving away your list. I, well, I was trying to find... I couldn't remember the name of somebody I was looking for a specific. It's gonna really going to bug me. <coughs> wow. Taxi drivers. Yep, the intern. It's strange. You look at this list. Taxi driver, heat. Goodfellas Casino, the intern. You know, just <laughs> a, little, a, term for worse. a little bit what? of a, a little bit of a jump there. Hey man, gotta pay them bills. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one. You got one. I do. Uh oh. I do. Is it on your screen? Yes. Boom. Um, I'm gonna say Demi Moore. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Um. Yeah, because. Uh, I don't know if it, the picture on the left was taken um, from. <laughs> oh my god! I can't think today. Uh, yeah, it's hard. Oh uh, yeah, I'll find the movie name. Oh, Saint Elmo's Fire. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah, great movie with, of course, kind of running the gambit of the '80s stars again. Uh-huh. Uh, a bunch uh, of they them. were all I was in gonna, it. I was gonna pick one of my stars from that movie. <laughs> were you? Yeah. yeah. So uh, had the cast of Rob Lowe and Emilio Estevez and, you know, yeah. everybody in it. Um, he was at Andrew McCarthy, I think was also in that one. Uh-huh. Great movie, but I tell you what, she has, in my opinion, has not aged hardly at all. And I don't know if a lot of it is plastic surgery or not. I mean, as a lot of them do. Yeah, but, she still looks good. Uh, yeah, I think she still looks phenomenal for 30 years later. Yeah. You know? I mean, she started it. that movie out when she was... 17 or something like mm-hmm. that? Gosh, yeah, real young. Yeah, she, yeah. They, they were pretty young. Yeah, um, this, I mean, of course, we have to trust uh, us weekly, but it says after driving out of high school at 16, uh, she started alongside them in St. Elmo's Fire. Wow. So, yeah. Huh. There you go. The days when you could drop out of high school and just become a movie star. Yeah, I know, right? exactly. Johnny Depp did something pretty similar. <laughs> I think he did. In those days. <laughs> yeah. He started on 21 Jump Street, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that where he he got dropped out of high school and moved to L.A. to play in rock bands and instead... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Became the Johnny Depp we know and love. I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> a couple options I was thinking here. Uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Because, I mean, no, Bill, Bill Murray is not having huge movies lately, but he's still He's still everywhere. been doing stuff, though. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of like that. It Kind of everywhere you look, you... <clears throat> hear his name or see something that he's yeah, doing. Yeah, I think what's happened is Bill Murray has officially like transcended from actual just movie star to some just kind of star. weird like uber celebrity mm-hmm. mythical person. <laughs> it's just weird, yeah. Well, I'm going to give an example of what you're talking about would be the Zombieland. Right. When he was yes. Bill Murray. Bill in Murray, movie. right? Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, you would see on the internet, I don't know if you ever saw any of these things on the internet, where it was um, the, the they'll never believe you stories, mm-hmm. where they would, they would make up, or maybe not make up, stories about running into Bill Murray and him doing like a ridiculous <laughs> thing, and, and then running off true. and saying, they'll never believe you. Nice. <laughs> That's good. I can believe that, too. Yeah. That's but good. It that was, sounds I like mean, something he would do. 
Uh, for a couple of years, um, when I was in Brooklyn, like stories would just pop up in the different, like the Gothamist or different papers there. Or it'd be like, Bill Murray showed up at this party. <laughs> he just showed up at some normal person's party. <laughs> and that's, like, that's so funny because <laughs> who's ever going to be like, you're not coming in. You weren't invited to our party. It would be like, oh, Bill Murray. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, just look at all the headshots there you have up. I mean, there's Stripes, I see Ghostbusters, there's Scrooged. Um, all classics. Caddyshack, of course. Where's Groundhog, Groundhog Day? Sorry. Ground, no, Groundhog Day, I think, was 90s. Yeah. But it was early 90s. Yeah. Scrooged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love me some Bill Murray. A lot of fun. Okay. All right. All right. What's next? You're next. I'm next. Can you just do one? I don't know. <laughs> no. I'll go. I got one, Go anyways. Uh, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Okay. So, and I thought of this because I was just watching uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, <laughs> such a classic. <laughs> And Kevin Bacon is in the race for the cab at the beginning of the movie. That's funny. And I'm like, oh, man, I completely forgot Kevin Bacon was in this. He doesn't have a line, doesn't say anything, yeah. but as one of the parts in the beginning. What is he uh, What is he doing now? Uh, gosh, this, that, and everything. Kind this, of the same way. He just always has his name out and everything. Is he going to be in the right? Tremors TV show? Ooh, Tremors. <laughs> great movie. Uh, I think so, they're on, like Tremors 9 now. Yeah, what was he a lot of trimmers out there. in the 80s? I was trying to see what he what car. Okay. Footloose. Yeah. Footloose. I was trying to think what was his most but relevant his, his movie. His biggest in the 80s. thing in the 80s. I would say Footloose. <laughs> yeah. But then he was also on um, um, uh, Gleaming the Cube. It says he's in Animal House. Gleaming? I don't remember him Wait, in Animal no, House. Wait, no. Kevin Bacon wasn't in Gleaming the Cube. That wasn't, who was no, that? No, that was Christian Slater. Oh. Which Gleaming the Cube is a phenomenal movie. <laughs> if you have seen it. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry, that, Kevin Bacon fans. I'm, I am just happy that I've. <coughs> finally met somebody else who's seen Gleaming the Cube. Yeah. Because it's phenomenal. <laughs> I love it. Christian Slater as a skateboarder. It. Tony those, Hawk's in that movie. Those gigantic skateboards. Oh, yes. Incredible. You haven't seen it, have you? Oh, we you got to vote for Tom Hanks. Uh-oh. Which we're going to get so there. That's vote. coming. He, yeah. He's actually probably the most relevant actor <laughs> from the 1980s. <laughs> yeah, probably. Still the, probably the best actor today. <laughs> he's, he is about to play Mr. Rogers. That's how relevant he is. So the he's fun gonna, thing... He's going to play Mr. Rogers, and his career will not be harmed by that. No, in not any at way. all. Uh, have you ever played the game where you try and link actors and actresses back to Kevin Bacon? Yeah, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Of, yeah, in yeah. the shortest mm, amount of steps. Absolutely. It is absolutely crazy, and uh, the reason that uh, that game is out there is because uh, Kevin Bacon has worked with so many different people right. that you can link him to a lot of stuff and when you wait that says trimmers tv movie in 18 hmm i missed that one i'm sure it was amazing yeah he might have Uh, shown up for just a minute (laughs) (laughs) but who knows like Uh, like you were saying he's worked with so many people there there are a lot of projects on that imdb page right there uh yeah i mean just scrolling through here 93 of them as an actor uh but i was gonna go back to the 80s and just glance so yeah here you go friday the 13th remember him when he got killed by jason nope no i don't so i'm pretty sure that kevin bacon and david wagner just walked in he's I'm gonna not kevin bacon. he's gonna verify this for me in the 1980 friday the 13th kevin bacon was the one that was laying on the cot and jason reaches up and holds his forehead and the knife comes through his throat Right? I have no clue. Ugh. Oh, now we're going to have to look at... Uh, I did not like those movies at all. They what? scared me. <laughs> oh, man, it was such so. a cool death in the original Friday the 13th. It was great. I think it was... I'm pretty sure I that mean, it comes up as the first... Uh, how Kevin Bacon His died. first listing? No, it comes up as the first thing when you search Kevin Bacon Friday. Really? Uh, him getting stabbed through the throat? It just says Kevin Bacon it, Friday the 13th. In, so. Is it in it looks IMDb like it's him. or whatever? Oh, well, his death. Should we watch the right? uncut extended death scene? <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, it obviously he yeah, that's him. was what, in that. Are you um, all talking about perfect ways for Jeremy Bryant to die? Is that what, is that what yeah. top 10 is? That's or? top 10 that's next, next Wednesday. Week. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, out of the 80s, though, I would say from this list, Footloose is going to be yeah. the biggest <clears throat> Kevin Bacon movie. Yeah, and it's, it's been back in the pop culture sure. because of. Star Lord. Well, and because again, well, yes, but again, Repeatedly. Kenny Loggins 
Kenny has Boggins. created some magical moments so, for us. So what is today's top ten? Are y'all wrapping it up here? What was it? Uh, yeah, we're wrapping Still it up. Still wrapping it up. With oh, wow. the... Um, Top ten actors, actresses from the '80s who are still relevant today. Mm. So yeah. we had uh, uh, here. Okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, I had just given Kevin Bacon my last one or my top one. Sure, would be Robert Downey Jr. Mm. Be- really? Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, highest I mean, paid actor in Iron Man and everything. Yeah. He's still yeah. relevant. Now I'm going to go a different route and go with uh, Michael J. Fox. Mm. And oh I'll yeah. Say he's relevant in a different different realm way. Sure. Because of it's his Parkinson's. disease and yeah, yeah. and his. Uh, I guess philanthropy for for Parkinson's now. Yeah, and what he's doing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Huge actor in the '80s. Back to the Future. Man, truly. Doc Hollywood. Doc Hollywood. All I all yeah. I was going to mention was somebody who was super famous in the '80s and then was on Parks and Rec. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Nothing nearly as. <laughs> Nothing nearly <laughs> as exciting. <laughs> You're going Rob with Lowe. Rob Lowe. Yeah. Um, Rob also, Lowe's also good. his uh, his super fun. Uh, Saturday Night Live. What was it? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I, I liked him in Tommy Boy. He's got he's got really, really great comedic timing. He does, um, yeah. I like Rob Lowe. And you, get, you just sort of get the idea that it's, it would be a lot of fun to just hang out. Yeah, just and he played the, just like, the cool bad boy in St. Elmo's Fire. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, he did. The Man, bad so boy, many stars saxophone player. <laughs> with, with wet hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, um, you got the last one. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a one. one guy and one girl here. Okay, I'll, fair I mean, enough. Guy, well, she already mentioned it, Tom Hanks. I was just looking it up. Yeah. Man, some of his 80s movies, uh, The Burbs, Money Pit. <laughs> oh, man. It's the too Burbs. Too good. Um, Big. Turner and Hooch. All of the – so he's, he has to go down in history as one of the – Top. Greatest or most yeah. loved actors. Oh yeah, yeah. top five With for sure. The span of his the movies, the beginning of his career, all the way. Yeah, it's just everybody's just like, man, <laughs> I like Tom Hanks. The Money Pit, when he pours the last bucket of water in the tub <laughs> and it falls through the ceiling, <laughs> yes. and it's literally thirty seconds of him just laughing hysterically <laughs> because he's lost it. I just lose uh, it every time I see and that. And Big scene. was in the eighties too, right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Big's great so, movie. So his career sort of started out way in the early I think it was the early 80s might have even been the 70s with yeah. um, that show uh, I don't I don't remember the name of it but he and his friend it was like a takeoff on Tootsie where he and his friend had to had to oh, cross dress yes. in order to yes in order to go to work yeah um, <laughs> I can't get the burbs out of my head the burbs. Had Corey Feldman one. in it as well He's, Bruce Dern uh, <laughs> Some burbs is so now one, good. I was gonna say just one actor since we, they kind of tied together anyway would be we got to say Meg Ryan. If you mention the eighties, yeah, she's maybe not you quite do. as relevant today, obviously. Right, but uh, she was in the original Top Gun. Mm-hmm. When Harry Top met Gun. Sally back in the eighties, yeah, with Tom um, Hanks. With Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the she, other one, uh, You've Got Mail. Was she in You've Got Mail? Yeah, it was in the nineties. Mm, yeah, Wildcats football movie back in the eighties. Wait, was she in it? Yeah, she was the coach. Oh no, no that's no, Goldie that Hawn. Yeah. Sorry, my fault. I was going to say, uh, you ugly, you ugly. <laughs> Your mama said you ugly. <laughs> the cheerleaders. <laughs> you G-L-Y. You ain't got no alibi. Oh, yeah. That's, you know what? That's we good. should start every morning in the newsroom with that. We should. I like it. We should. I think uh, it's good. Yeah, Meg Ryan. Uh, she was just in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No. Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> Man, see, I get, <laughs> I get like parallel actors mixed up all the time. It's close though. That's it's, close. Like, it's, close. it's Kevin Bacon. He's like, look, no, this Christian. We're thing. gonna, we're gonna get it right one of these yeah. days. No, we're not. Time, we're, we're not. Kind of wrap right. up shop. That's true. We probably won't. Yeah, I think it is on that. Look, there you go. We gave you some good actors and actresses <laughs> from the '80s. Go look them up. And we'll yeah. be back tomorrow. Up. Jeremy won't. He'll be back next week. Maybe. Maybe he might be fired. We don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll With any luck. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. We'll see you tomorrow at 11. Jeff, take us out. All right.